The next individual I get to introduce is Mr. Don Prue. Most of you know him as our videographer and our treasurer, but Don has been a Toastmaster of Carrollwood for four years. This story is about an experience he had while working up north. One of his favorite sayings is, good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. This story is about how he developed some of that experience. Please give a shout out and welcome Mr. Don Prue as he presents his Leadership Development Pathways Level 2, the first speech titled, Be Careful What You Say. Be careful what you say, Mr. Don Prue. Come on, Don. Monday, January 26th. 1998 started out like most Mondays for me. It was 9 a.m. and I was just starting my work day. As I sat at my desk sipping on my cup of coffee, Joe walked out of his office and said, Donald, let's take a walk to Dave's office. He would like to see you. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, Little did I know that this day would be one of the worst days of my professional life. <laughs> For a little background, Joe was my boss and CFO at Direct Federal Credit Union. Dave was the president and CEO. I seldom saw Dave because he was somewhat of a recluse and only dealt with his direct reports. So being called down to his office was a big deal, either good or bad. He did not tolerate criticism or disagreement at all. Another important piece of information was Joe was my original boss, but a couple of years earlier, he was replaced because his wife had tragically died from a brain aneurysm. Dave felt Joe could not get his head in back into the game, so to speak. So Dave hired Celia to replace him and moved Joe over to be a loan officer in lending. Celia became the rising star at Direct until she did something Dave was not expecting. She got pregnant. Then to compound matters, she developed toxemia and missed over six months of work. Dave was not pleased and when she did return, he demoted her to manager of planning and financial analysis. This angered Celia, who felt she should have gotten her job back. As we walked into Dave's office, I could see his face was beet red and he was angry. I sat down at his desk and he looked at me and said, I know you're aware of the lawsuit and are a part of it. I looked at him and said, Dave, I don't know what you're talking about, about a lawsuit, and I'm certainly not involved in it. He looked at me angrily and said, liar, I know you're aware of Celia's lawsuit against me and the credit union. Again, I profess my ignorance about the lawsuit. Then he pulled the book from his desk. He opened it and said, this is a diary that Celia has been keeping of conversations she's had with various employees at Direct. At that point, I think, oh, crap. He then turned to a page and said, let me read an excerpt from it. Then Don said, you don't understand, Celia. Joe and Dave come from a world where the women stay at home and cook, clean, and raise the children while the men go to work to make the money. I responded by saying, Dave, you have to understand, you make a lot of tough decisions here that have an adverse effect on everyone. And sometimes we commiserate with each other to support someone when they're feeling down. His reaction was, I don't need your approval to make decisions and run this credit union. And who the hell do you think you are to comment about my wife? You know nothing of her career or her accomplishments. At that point, I realized I'm not going to change anyone's mind in the room and decide to keep my mouth shut. 
After several more minutes of this tirade, I apologized for any insult to his wife and promised to keep my mouth shut. He replies, get the hell out of my office. I bolt out of there with Joe following me. When we got back to Joe's office, he looked at me and said, what the hell were you thinking? I look at him and go, I know, I know. I wasn't thinking, obviously. Then I return to my desk. And as I sit there, I see several other people who I'm sure did not volunteer head down to Dave's office and come out visibly shaking. One person I thought might also be in the diary was off that Monday. I called him that night to warn him. He felt confident that he wasn't in the diary and had nothing to fear. I can still hear Ned walking by my desk on his way to Dave's office the next morning pleading with his senior manager, but Joe, I don't wanna go. I didn't say anything. I know I didn't say anything. It turned out what Ned said, I think was a little worse than what I said. Dave read Ned's quote to him by saying, you have just three problems, Celia. You're a woman, you're a woman, and you're a woman. Ned's response was, I was taken out of contact. When Ned told me this, I told him, I don't understand what other context you could have meant than what you said. But to this day, he insists he was taken out of context. In conclusion, while Ned and I would keep our jobs, we would be called into court to testify about that terrible day. The lawsuit would go to trial. Celia refused all attempts to settle out of court. She wanted a trial and Dave to take the stand. Ironically, the jury found for the credit union on all claims except one. The only claim she received a favorable verdict on was retaliation, which had to do with how Dave treated her during her pregnancy and once she returned. It was referred to as bullying. The monetary judgment totaled $730,000. The moral of the story is, be careful of what you say, Madam Toastmaster. <laughs> yes, thank you, General Evaluator. Today I was evaluating Don Prue's speech. Let me just start by saying, Mr. Don Prue, I respect you greatly for getting up there and giving a five to seven minute speech, because we all know how difficult that is. And it takes a lot of courage and a lot of practice to really do it as well as you did. I'm, I'm very proud of you just by saying that. And I give you praise and admiration for that. I want to say, sir, you were excellently dressed in a nice suit and tie. Beautiful. I loved it right out the gate. Gave me a great first impression about what the speech is going to be about. It showed that you were professional and that you were going to know what you were talking about. I love that. And it was also very easy to focus on your speech because you had the whole green screen and all I saw was you. So there's no distractions in the background. It's just you speaking, and that's it. I enjoyed that. Also, you had a fantastic cliffhanger in the beginning of the story. You said, this is going to, I little did I know this is going to be the worst day of my life. And when you said that, I want to listen on, because that's just something that clicks in my head, like, okay, what's happening next? And that was excellent. I give you props. Also, your speech I noticed it was very clear and it sounded like you practiced it a lot because there was little uhs, ums. I actually didn't catch any. I'm sure the all counter didn't catch any either because I was listening pretty hard, but that was beautiful. I'm very impressed by that as well. I also enjoyed how you took on the characters. You took on Dave and him yelling and cursing. That was fantastic. That kept me engaged. I really enjoyed listening to that and it really brought me into the story a lot more than just monotonely speaking the dialogue. That was also a great touch. I also enjoyed the word bolt when you said bolt. I, I love that word. It reminds me of a movie bolt with the dog and it just brought back some memories. I'm sure other people have brought back some memories, whatever they used in their life. 
I also enjoyed how you used names. You weren't scared to use people's names, which a lot of people don't do in stories, which keeps it sort of vague. And you used names like Dave and Celia, all these names, which really brought me more personalized to the story, which was I also enjoyed. And I also enjoyed how you put Ned in the story, how you said I messed up. But you know who really messed up? This guy. And that was kind of interesting, too. That was a little little humor to it. I also enjoyed that greatly. And one big thing I can tell you about this is the speech. It was a giant story. And I love stories. A lot of people enjoy stories. And you can easily relate to stories, especially the way you were telling it. And I also enjoyed how you gave the lesson at the end. You made it very clear in the conclusion what the lesson was to be took out of it. He said, be careful what you say, because in this instance, all the conversations with the wife and the coworkers was recorded, and you never know who's listening or watching or taking note of what you're saying. And we need to work on, I got nothing we need to work on, but to challenge yourself, I would say maybe use some more hand gestures. You seemed a little stiff at times, just from my, what I was looking at. I think that'd really boost you to the next level. And when you take on characters, change your tone extremely dramatic, which you did good. But if you even bump it up another level, you'll get to that next, next level that I know you can get at, Mr. Don. Thank you, sir.